ดีค่ะสวัสดีเจ้า Hello and welcome back to Thai Girl Talk with me from Learn to Speak Thai and Lonnie from Tell Thai Heart. Welcome back to our interview series with Hugh Leong from Retire to Thailand dot com, and that's Retire to Number Two Thailand dot com. Well, seems like everyone would like to hear your advice, and <laughs> if you can pick top. Three advices that you can give to uh, our listener. Three things for uh, to think about in retirement. Mm-hmm. It's advice that I have. Number one, if you're going to be moving to a different place, the best thing to do is do it as a a trial on right, a trial basis. Right, just like what you did, right? Going yeah, back and start forth. off. You know, just getting used to uh, the place and seeing if you like it at all. If you stay a little longer, you could look for things like the supermarkets that have the foods that you like, doctors that you like, pharmacies that have the medications you need, housing. Find out what they cost. Transportation. And, uh, how to get how, around? Yeah, how to get around? What, what does a car cost? Can you drive in Thailand? Some people never drive here; they're scared. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, looking at the cost of things. How much? How much would renting a house cost? Mm-hmm. And seeing if you can afford it. Yeah. If you live in Bangkok, yeah. you might be spending two thousand dollars a month just for rent. Right. You know. So it all depends on how much you have. That's what you would do on a trial retirement. You would look at different places. So how are you meeting all these retirees? Do you meet them through your blog primarily? Because I've actually had those questions. How do you meet other people? Uh huh. Now for me, I've been around a long time. I have two groups of people. One people I've known for many many years. Yeah. And others who I get introduced to by other people. I always invite people. Out to the house, and you know, we sit down and talk. Then I meet a lot of people just through the web who ask questions and uh, who I try to help. I also have a couple of e-books that I written. Uh, one called "Retired Life in Thailand," and people buy the book and then they contact me and talk to me. That's one group of people. Mm-hmm. If you're just coming here, you won't have that connection. Right. But there are some ways of getting connected up with other retirees. One is the expat club. Mm-hmm. There are more than one in the country. One in the northeast. Bangkok has probably two. There's one in Chiang Mai, and this is a group of people who usually was recently come. And they form clubs. They form groups that do things like a bird watching club or a photography club mm-hmm. or a chess club activities. Yeah. Chiang Mai also has another group of people called the Chiang Mai Friends. This is a group of people that get together about once a month. They usually have a nice dinner and wine together, and then they kind of plan ways of a volunteer work, planting oh. trees mm-hmm. or. Things like that. That's nice. Legally, you can't volunteer in Thailand unless you have a work permit. Mm-hmm. But what these people is that they do is they have a connection with the immigration department where they'll allow them to do this kind of work as a group. Mm-hmm. You know, the group does it, so you're not doing it as an individual. So that's a that's another one. Chiang Mai friends, and then the Chiang Mai expats club, and the yeah. Bangkok, Khon Ken, uh, Korat all have expat clubs. Phuket, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, there also, I have a friend who started a businessman's club uh, in Phuket. Wow. Um, there are foreigners who have opened up businesses in the area, and they get together once a month or so and discuss problems or just get together. Now, if you live in a uh, compound. Which I do, and which I recommend. They call m u b a n right? m u b a n yeah. yeah. Uh, m u b a n is an old Thai word for village, but it's used nowadays as a gated community. You'll find that a large percentage of your neighbors will be foreigners. Yes. Because they like living in m u b a n s But Chiang Mai has probably 40,000 expats living here. Wow, oh, I did not know that. Yeah, mm. no, people don't. Here, the the largest group is probably the British. Yeah. Uh, or Germans. the Japanese. Oh, Japanese. Oh, yes. Now so the Japanese, Japanese tend to. Come Come only a few months a year. They don't tend mm-hmm. to live here all year round like the Europeans or the Americans do. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go to the Northeast, where there's even more foreigners, <laughs> yes, you know, in the uh, Isan area, yeah, yes. in the Isan really? area, you can see that Thailand has a lot of expats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Well, the expat trying to get together, you know, to share different idea and different thought. But what about the expat trying to get to meet a Thai? Uh-huh. You think it's difficult to meet? That gets to the point. Number two. I, well, Remember, I was—I had three things that okay. we wanted to talk about. The second thing was 
find something to do. Mm -hmm. And the expats club could help you with that or find something that interests you. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the third is, and this goes with your question, I think everyone should learn Thai. Now, that's uh, asking for a lot because Thai is is not an easy language to learn for most Westerners. Thai, because of its tonal system and because it is so different from the Western languages, is is also a very difficult language to learn. Mia, you know your language teacher, so you know how difficult it is for us Westerners to learn. And here are the tones at first. Just, well, the tones are difficult yeah. enough. If you like to sing like I do, maybe yeah. the tones are a little easier. But for most people, the tones are going to be very difficult, but not impossible. The reason it's not impossible is think of this. When a Thai baby is learning to speak, it learning to speak with the correct tones. If anyone says, I can't even hear the different tones, they're not really being correct. If I sung the song Happy Birthday to you and I sung God Save the Queen... <laughs> <laughs> you would you would know the difference right? right right that means you can hear different tones yeah. And you can differentiate different tones. Happy birthday to you and God save the queen. Dif- different, right? <laughs> because some people say I'm tone that, deaf. That, <laughs> you are not tone deaf. Right. No one is tone deaf. Okay. Unless I agree. unless they can't hear the difference between happy birthday and God save the queen, then they're probably <laughs> tone deaf. But that means all of us can hear different tones. Now, all of us are born with the exact same what we call sound producing mechanisms in our body. That's the throat and the sinus cavities and nasal cavities and all that. That's what produces sounds. That means if a baby can say a tone correctly, then you can. That means if uh, someone speaking a South African click language can say clicks in their language, that means you can. Now, there are reasons why we have trouble doing it, but it doesn't mean we can't do it. Right, right, right. Okay. So that's when it comes to tones. That's my take on tones. My take on the language is this. Learning a language, if you're 60 or if you're 16, is going to be difficult. It's not going to be easy. But remember, number two, find something to do. Yeah, right. <laughs> to learn Thai. Learning Thai is going to be something that'll take you the rest of your life to do, and it'll be fun. And you'll be able to meet people. Mm-hmm. You'll be yes. able to communicate your ideas. They'll communicate their ideas to you. We won't have to just say things like, I'm hungry, you know. <laughs> no, you can talk about politics. You can right. talk about love. You can talk about the sky. You can talk about, you know, uh, religion if you want. If you don't learn Thai, you won't be able to talk about anything except maybe I'm hungry. Right. right? Which is okay, That's <laughs> but usually not enough for me. Yeah. Okay. So my advice is if you want to understand Thai people and the Thai culture, you'll have to Learn make Thai. an effort at learning the Thai language. Right, yeah. Well, I think this is actually a good segue because the next episode we were going to do with you, we were going to do it all in Thai. In Thai. <laughs> and then you guys can talk a little bit more about how long you You've been learning Thai and right. other questions. I think to raise the question about learning Thai, I have answered this question every day, whether or not they should learn reading and writing uh-huh. Thai. So what is your uh, opinion about that here? For 25 years after I first started learning Thai, I never learned to read. I didn't even know the Thai alphabet uh, because I could say things I needed right. to say. I didn't get very much past uh, I'm hungry, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I could say what I needed to say. When I moved back to Thailand, I realized that my vocabulary was limited to things I encountered on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like the floor or it's dirty, uh, the birds are singing. I mean, I could say things like that. Right. But I couldn't say things like uh, Obama is making an official mm-hmm. visit to Thailand. Or why the birds singing. Or why the birds are singing, <laughs> or what they're singing about. I, I couldn't right. talk about that. So I realized that the reason I couldn't is because I had a limited vocabulary, and it was limited by my surroundings, whatever I could say or whatever people said to me. Well, the only way I could think of increasing that is by reading. Mm-hmm. And because when you read, especially in Thai, because written Thai is quite different from spoken mm, right. Thai. It's different because they're using more formalized way of expression. So I first learned the alphabet. Really, this is, I'm 55 years old and I'm learning the alphabet, okay? And uh, so I'm, I'm not a young guy right. doing this, right? But he looks young. <laughs> <laughs> I started off with the money books like you have oh, on your yes. website. Started off with Aesop's Fables. There's also a group of books called the Song Pasa books. That means two language books. They're stories that are written in two languages. It's the same story. One is in English and one mm-hmm. is in Thai. 
and I graduated to those books. Oh. And uh, eventually, I graduated to newspapers. Wow. Um, if anybody's interested in reading newspapers, the first thing I recommend is never reading the headlines. Because no one can understand even the headlines. Thai, even to be Thai, honest, right. I'm like, what? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> because oh, they're all man. slang and they're all made right. up words. You yeah. can't just like try to read the newspaper and then say, oh, I can't do it. Never do it again. I went through this day after day after day of, of not understanding anything mm -hmm. except maybe one or two words and increasing my vocabulary one word a day or two words a day. And now I can get by. I still can't get the headlines right. <laughs> But I can get by most uh, articles. And by doing that, it's increased my vocabulary to the point where I can just, I can say anything I need to say. But it didn't happen overnight. Right. right? Okay. So again, I'm retired. I got time. And, and <laughs> that's right. I need stuff to do. So. <laughs> well, you also need motivation. And so I think that's really great. Well, interesting. I was just writing about that, uh, about motivation. Motivation tends to be the only variable in language learning that makes any difference. And my point is, if you're living in a country surrounded by 65 million people who speak a different language from you, isn't that motivation enough to want to talk to them? At least a couple of the 65 exactly. million, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I do recommend it. Probably of all the things that I advice I would give, I'd say that would be number one. What do you love about learning Thai? I equate it to the same way as learning golf. I was close to 60 when I first started playing golf. Golf is the hardest thing I've ever done. Mm, it is wow. so difficult. So the reason I love golf is because it's so difficult. Well, the reason I love learning Thai is because it's difficult. Oh. I don't think Thai is easy. Wow. And I'm not a good language learner. I never have been. I failed French and Spanish when I was in high school. <laughs> I am definitely not a good language learner. I just work really hard at it because it's fun to do something it's a challenge. That's hard. Right. Yeah. Well, if you could think about your favorite Thai saying or phrases. <laughs> the top one. Yeah. And uh, I'll say it in Thai first and then I'll translate it. Pak Chi Roy Na. Oh, I love this one. <laughs> okay, I'll say it again. Pak Chi Roy Na. Pak Chi Roy Na. Right. Now, Pak Chi is uh, the Thai word for coriander, mm -hmm. or usually those leaves that you never eat, but they always sprinkle on right. the top of things. Just like in the way you sprinkle parsley, parsley on top of pasta. Yeah, say similar, yeah. yeah, to parsley. And Roy means to sprinkle. Right. Okay, to sprinkle, usually sprinkle on top. And Na means the top. Uh -huh. So Pak Chi Roy Na is the coriander that's sprinkled on top. <laughs> and okay. it's, it's an idiom, but basically to me, it means that the Thai culture, the Thai people allow you to see certain things about them, usually the good stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. the, the one they want to present. They, yeah, they want what you they to want know to show, about that. Right. Right. And that's okay. this parsley or coriander sprinkled on top, the pretty part. Okay. Well, underneath right. the soup, let's say, there's lots of stuff going on underneath right. there. It looks good. It looks good, but, but what's going on underneath right. there, right? So Pak Chi Roy now usually means they're putting their best face forward, but there could be other stuff going on that you'll never be able to see oh. unless you start to understand the Thai culture. In order to do that, you have to know the Thai language. <laughs> so if your daughter is going out on a date, you could yeah. say that before she left the house. Put on your best face. <laughs> yeah, pak chi roi na. It's very negative it's meaning. More negative. Oh, it's negative. Yeah. Because if you're already good, if the foods look good, you don't have to sprinkle anything to make it look better. Right. There's no, There's no dressing up necessary. Right. Exactly. So it's a little negative meanings about So it. how would you use it? Okay. Like, Let's say I'm going to have a party at home on Sunday and my house is totally a, a mess. And I'm just like stuff everything in my closet or in, in my bedroom. <laughs> under the bed, right? Under the bed and try to swipe everything, make everything look clean. Yeah. So I have the living room that look nice. You know, we have a saying in English, we call it sweeping everything under the rug. Yeah. 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 Right? You Take all the dirt and you sweep it on the rug, put right. the rug down, it looks clean. So okay. that's the use of Pak Chi Roy Na. It's very interesting. <laughs> we sweep it under and they sprinkle something on yeah. top. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the time is running out, but we still have one more episode with you. But this mm -hmm. time it's going to be in Thai. Oh, so, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but don't worry, we'll try to speak slow and we have Thai script and English translation. Thank you for listening. If you have any comments or feedback, please feel free to leave it on the site. We'll see you next time. สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ